Bookkeeping can be both straightforward and cost-effective. This template is designed for solo proprietors, freelancers, small business owners, and those filing Schedule C IRS form to report income and expenses for their business. We are going to demonstrate how you can manage bookkeeping using Google Sheets or Excel step-by-step. -step. This is not only simple and free, but an excellent starting point for your bookkeeping journey. You can get our free template by clicking the link in the description to receive a Google Sheet link to the template. You can make a copy and customize it to fit your needs. Welcome to Circular's YouTube channel, where we share tips and tricks to help you manage your finances better. After opening our Google Sheet, you'll see multiple tabs at the bottom. We'll walk you through each tab. Let's start by navigating to the Transaction tab. Here, you'll find five essential columns. Transaction description, date, amount, transaction type, where you choose your business expense category. And the last column has IRS accepted categories as per Schedule 4. C. the transaction type column is critical. As a business owner, you must accurately categorize each transaction according to the IRS guidelines. But don't worry, it's not as daunting as it might sound. Categorizing transactions is manageable once you become familiar with the different categories. We're here to assist you in accurate categorization. To log your entry, go to a new column under the transaction description and write the entry details. Remember, a journal entry in accounting records financial transactions by entering details into the company's books. So, name your transactions appropriately to explain the primary business event. For example, if you want to add a business meal expense with a client at McDonald's, write McDonald's in this column. Add the date of the meal in the next column, and the total cost, let's say, is $12.98. And then you will select the transaction type by clicking the drop-down icon, which in our case is meals and entertainment. You will notice that the next column will show the relevant IRS category, which in this case is travel and meals. This feature reduces the need to refer back to IRS guidelines frequently. Similarly, when you want to record an income, you will go to the row below and add another entry. Let's name this entry as product sale one, and we will add the date of this entry here. The amount, let's say, is $560, and let's indicate it is cash income. To do this, we will select the cash income category from the drop-down menu here. The next column will link this entry to the correct IRS category automatically. See how simple this was. Let me go ahead and add more entries in the rows below for demonstration purposes. Now, to add more transaction types to your sheet, follow these simple steps. One, go to any cell in column D, click the drop-down icon, and scroll to the bottom until you find a pen icon. Hovering over this icon, you'll see Edit button. Clicking it opens a new box on your right called Data Validation Rule. Two, if you're using Microsoft Excel, select the entire D column by clicking its top. Then, from the menu, select Data and choose Data Validation. You'll see a box indicating your selected range, like D2, D1000, showing 1000 rows from column D have been selected. This area includes various tax categories for each transaction. To add a new category for both Google Sheets and Excel, scroll to the bottom of this list and select Add Another Item, and then enter your new category, for example, Mileage, and click Done. After these steps, the new category, Mileage, will be available for selection in the drop-down menu of every cell within column D. You can add as many categories as you want, but for your convenience, we've already compiled a list of these categories and pasted them in the validation box so you can choose from these tax categories when adding a new transaction entry. You can easily categorize every transaction, whether it's a bank charge, interest, meals, and entertainment, or any other type. This feature makes categorization more efficient, and you'll have these categories at your fingertips when adding new transactions for bookkeeping. Another reason this is important is that you will now be able to extract data from this sheet to the profit and loss statement by having Google Sheets total all expenses within a specific category. This will significantly save you time and effort. A practical tip here, you might consider creating a separate sheet for each month's transactions. This method helps in organizing and accessing data more efficiently. Alternatively, you could choose to maintain a single sheet that includes all transactions, neatly categorized and sorted chronologically by date. This way, you avoid the clutter of having 12 separate sheets for a year. Additionally, you might want to have one sheet dedicated to all your transactions and another for your banking needs. But before we move forward, check on the right. In column G, there's a small box set up to automatically calculate your net profit by subtracting expenses from your net income. It's there for your convenience and we'll show you how to configure it in the next tab. 
Whenever you update any transaction value, this box will refresh automatically with the new calculations. Let's see it in action. Suppose you realize an error in an entry like a rent bill incorrectly entered as $150 instead of $145. Once corrected, the total automatically updates, reflecting the change. Next, let's check column J. You will find tables designed to assist in calculating your tax deductions. The first table is for calculating your home office deductions. If you are unfamiliar, the small business home office deductions deduction applies to taxpayers who use part of their home exclusively and regularly for trade or business purposes. To determine if you qualify for this deduction, you may seek guidance from your CPA. The home office deduction can be calculated using either the regular method or the safe harbor method, known as the simplified method. Our free calculator is available to help estimate the potential tax write-off for your home office as a self-employed individual using the simplified method. First, enter the total square footage of your home in column K. Then indicate the square footage of your home office in the same column, directly below this cell. Please note that the maximum allowable footage is 300 square feet, with the IRS providing a deduction of $5 per square foot of your home used for business, up to a maximum of $1,500 for a 300 square foot area. Therefore, the calculation is limited to 300 square feet in this cell. If your focus is solely on bookkeeping, record the entire amount and have your CPA make any necessary adjustments to the journal entries at the year's end. The next table allows you to calculate your business meal expenses. Self-employed individuals can deduct up to 50% of the expenses incurred for meals directly associated with business activities. To calculate the 50% deductible meal expense, simply input the total meal cost in row 12 of column K and the result will be displayed in row E14 of column K. It is important to note that while keeping all receipts for business meals is not mandatory, maintaining accurate bookkeeping records of your expenses is essential. Additionally, you should be capable of verifying that the meal expenses were business related. The next table allows you to calculate mileage deductions. Using the 2024 IRS standard mileage rate, you can claim 67 cents per mile for business related driving. Simply enter your business miles driven in row 18 of column K and the relevant dollar amount for mileage deductions will be displayed in row 20 of column K. Also note, to claim a deduction for business mileage, you must show that you kept records of business miles driven. Now, let's go to the next tab, profit and loss statement, which is a crucial aspect of bookkeeping. If you haven't prepared a profit and loss statement before, its primary purpose is to outline what a business has earned and spent and to determine whether it has made a profit or incurred a loss within a specific time frame. To illustrate this, let's use the profit and loss statement sheet we've set up for you. It's quite basic but effective. It categorizes all the totals from the transaction sheet. The first box on your sheet displays all your income sources and the box below it lists all your expense categories with their respective amounts. We've pre filled these for your convenience, but it's crucial to manually update them with any new categories you add, such as mileage, both in the transaction sheet and the profit and loss statement sheet. We're also introducing a formula to automate data transfer from your transaction sheet to your profit and loss statement. This formula, initiated with an equal sign, will categorize and total expenses by category, ensuring both sheets reflect the same up-to-date information efficiently. Here's how it works. First, we select the transactions sheet and focus on cells D2 to D100 to search for specific categories like mileage. We're telling the formula to look in these cells for any entries labeled mileage. Next, we ask the formula to sum up the amounts in cells C2 to C100 that correspond to mileage entries. This range holds the monetary values for each transaction by entering equal sign, sum if, bracket open, transactions, D2 to D100, comma, mileage, comma, transactions, C2 to C100, bracket close, and then press enter, this formula now calculates the total spent on mileage. And if there are no mileage transactions yet, the result will show as zero. To test the formula, let's assign a $20 transaction as a road trip and categorize it as mileage in the transactions sheet. The sum if formula will then factor this into the calculation and update the total mileage expense in the profit and loss statement. As the total expenses change, the net profit automatically updates its total as well. We've included a formula that deducts total Total expenses from total income, providing you with an updated net profit figure and saving you time on calculations. Additionally, you can easily access journal entries for a specific date by double-clicking on the desired day. A new tab will then open, displaying all entries from that day. Lastly, the last two tabs are for reference only and do not require any changes. If you want to calculate your Section 179 expenses or get to know the IRS categories from the Schedule C form, you can ask your CPA. 
To download any necessary IRS forms, simply go to the IRS Form tab and click on the link for the document you need. We trust this template will make your bookkeeping easier and serve as an excellent foundation. For those looking to save time on organizing high volume receipts and streamlining data entry, our AI bookkeeping assistant at circular.io is here to help. Start your free trial today with no credit card required and see how it can transform your bookkeeping processes.